What's good, y'all? What's good, Real Talk Squad? This is Miles, and you're listening to Real Talk of Miles Johnson, where you know we always keep it real. Let's get straight into it, man. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that jazz. Share with a friend to share with a friend. Let's get straight into this episode. I'm going to say some stuff, and I'm going to have a disclaimer out here. Um, if you're a Lamar Jackson super fan, if you are a Ravens fan, if you're from Baltimore, you probably don't want to hear this. I'm sorry. But Lamar Jackson is the NFL version of James Harden. Now, what do we know about James Harden for some that maybe don't know the legacy of James Harden? James Harden is a phenomenal player, one of the best players of all time in the NBA. I would argue that he would go down as one of the best regular season players of all time in his stint in Houston. I mean, when you talk about what James Harden did between 2015 and 2019 with Houston, it was unbelievable, bro. Simply unbelievable. And he was able to do a lot with less. But what happened come playoff time? He was nowhere to be found. What about that closeout game versus the Spurs? Nowhere to be found. What about that closeout game against the Warriors multiple times? Nowhere to be found. Or even early in his career when he was on OKC and he was coming off the bench in that finals, he was nowhere to be found. So we have that context with James Harden. Lamar Jackson is the same way. Lamar Jackson is the NFL version of James Harden because his play severely drops in the regular season compared to the playoffs. In the regular season, he is phenomenal. He is one of one. It's a reason why he has two MVPs, right? But when you come to the playoff time and you have a guy with a 2-6 and six record with two MVPs, that's very alarming. And I go, I go, I go through the stats. I go through the stats, and I see completion percentage in the postseason, fifty-seven percent, yards per attempt, six point eight, touchdown and interceptions, six touchdowns, six interceptions. Compared to the regular season, he has a sixty-four percent completion percentage. That's up by seven points. His yards per attempt is seven point five. In his whole entire career. Touchdown interceptions, 125 to 45 interceptions. So when you think about all of that, it's pretty, pretty wild that there is a guy that doesn't get much criticism from his fans about his play. And I'm bringing this up because what happened at the Chiefs game? What happened during the Chiefs game, bro? What happened during the Chiefs game was... Lamar was spectacular. He was spectacular during the third quarter, during the second quarter, during the first quarter. But when it came to the fourth quarter and you needed a drive for your life to go ahead and tie the game or win the game by getting that extra, uh, getting your two points, and John Harbaugh definitely was pointing that too, what happened with the Ravens? Two plays. You have one play where there was a fade route. Isaiah Likely, who was having a career night, he's open, wide open. But Lamar lofts the ball, and the defender gets there in time to go ahead and break it up. And then what happened on that very, very crazy play where you have Zay Flowers wide open in the end zone, and Lamar misses him by a mile. Now, apparently that was for Rashad Bateman, and there was miscommunication there. I don't care. You're the quarterback. You're a two-time MVP. You got to get it done. You simply did not get it done. And my biggest problem with Lamar fans is that if this was Josh Allen, if this was Jalen Hurts, if this was any other quarterback, Joe Burrow, y'all would be like, that guy isn't him. Oh, that guy got to produce. No excuses. I don't care about the defense. I don't care about his offensive line. I don't care about his other weapons. No, no, no. But then when Lamar, then you want to bring in all the excuses. You want to bring in, oh, well, uh, he would did, he did so much prior to. It's like, dude, no matter, you're a two-time MVP. And I'm willing to concede that Lamar is a victim of his own success because you don't get criticized 
or you don't have expectations on you if you don't have people thinking that you are that type of guy, that you are a great player, which he is. But Lamar has not shown me in the postseason that he is that guy that he is in the regular season. That's simply a fact. And that's why I will continue to say until he proves me wrong that he is the NFL version of James Harden because both players are full elite. Both players are elite in the regular season. Lamar is elite, bro. The plays he was making yesterday were flat out amazing. They were. But when you needed a play in the end, he did not deliver. James Harden, multiple times, has not delivered. And I want to keep saying, Lamar can change this narrative. He can by playing better. But we're not going to act like it's not a thing. We're not going to act like his postseason struggles, his struggles in clutch time are not real. They're just made up. They're just people hating. Nah, man. Nah, man. And when I look at a guy like Jalen Hurts, who gets crapped on all the time, but last season he had six freaking games where he came back. <laughs> where he came back, bro. He had six touchdowns, bro. Zero interceptions. Zero interceptions, bro. What about that game against the Bills? Play after play after play in clutch time. I would rather have Jalen Hurts over Lamar Jackson if I needed a game for my life any day of the week. Because we see with Lamar, he is great in those first three quarters. <laughs> He's great in the first three quarters. And then when, when you get to clutch time and then palms get sweaty and it's like, all right, bro, like, it's do or die right now. He isn't his best self. And that is they're taking it lightly on the guy. Versus Jalen Hurts, every time he's trailing, he's going to fight back. Now, I know that last season didn't end on a positive note, but let's not act like he gave Mahomes the best run for his money in the Super Bowl. And everybody he played for outside of Tom Brady, it's been Tom Brady, it's been Jalen Hurts. That's what I feel like it's been the most run for his money. And Jalen Hurts got no defense. Not in 2022. No, not in the playoffs when Jennings Bradbury held the team back. And it was Jalen Hurts that flat out out duel Patrick Mahomes. You feel me? So, look, I just want y'all Ravens fans, y'all Lamar fans to just be honest and be like, you know what? Lamar, he is a fantastic player. He's one of one in the regular season, but he's got to produce more in the postseason. That's all I ask. And the story is not written. It's still unwritten. The book is still open, and Lamar can, he can write a new script. He can write a new page and show people, hey, yo, these playoff demons, my playoff struggles, they're behind me. And we have seen all-time great players do that. Le LeBron James, LeBron James, he had playoff struggles. Peyton Manning, he was 0-3 in his first five seasons in the league. I'm talking about in the playoffs. Uh, so, so the all-time greats have gone through playoff struggles. It's very, very rare to have a Jordan, to have a Mahomes, that they don't really have playoff struggles for real, for real, at least for long periods of time like that. And so ultimately, Lamar can write his own story, but it's on him to do that. And you're being disingenuous. You're not being objective if you don't see that Lamar has work to do in being clutch and shining in the biggest moments. I love y'all. Appreciate y'all. Show some love. Like, comment, subscribe. Man, fly, Eagles, fly. Because today is our day. We out, y'all.